Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 FM. I'm Paul Kretschmer. We're going to have a two-day lesson on nutrition here on the WIHS Journal today and tomorrow. The topic is vegetables for breakfast from A to Z. Change your breakfast, change your life. We'll hear from the author about it. So my name is Nancy Wolfson Moshe, and um, I'm publishing a book this week called Vegetables for Breakfast from A to Z. Change your breakfast, change your life. Um, and I'm here to talk about it. How long has this uh, book been in process then, Nancy? Oh, so funny you should ask. Um, well, I began a blog in 2013 uh, called Vegetables for Breakfast. And for one year, from 2013, from June of 2013 to June of 2014, I blogged every day. I posted the vegetable dish that I fed my family along with the recipe and some photos. Um, and then at the end of the year, I had lots of followers and people were asking me for, people were questioning, is that all you're eating for breakfast? Um, and I responded, no, I also eat a whole grain and often a plant protein, but this is just a vegetable dish. So from June of 2014 on, I began blogging um, much more sporadically, at first monthly, and then it sort of fell off, about the whole breakfast that I ate. So I've continued to blog, but um, I decided to make it into a book, and I wanted to sort of add more. Um, on my blog, I basically do a short introduction, and then I, um, I share the recipe. Um, but in the book, I give a lot more information, and I decided to arrange it, to alphabetize it by vegetable. Um, and so each, um, each recipe, each each letter includes the name of the vegetable, and then I go into um, lots of sort of quirky and quirky information and fun facts about each vegetable, including uh, some of the the botanical information, some nutritional information, and then lots of stories that include folk tales or just um, interesting fun facts about each vegetable. Did people find it very interesting that you would talk about using vegetables as a major component, although you yourself pointed out to people who wrote you or contacted you through your blog that that it wasn't the only factor in breakfast, but in fact a, a major por portion of it? So, um, yes, I mean, the standard American breakfast does not include vegetables. There are cultures that eat vegetables for breakfast on a rather regular basis. Um, in Japan, they do. In Israel, they do. But it's it's definitely not part of our our culture, um, and it, it's not part of our culture historically. And certainly, as we've evolved into a culture that often eats breakfast on the run or grabs takeout breakfast um, up until recently, now that has changed. Yeah. Um, so, so no, vegetables were, were something not on most people's radar, which is exactly why I wanted to, um, to blog about it and which is exactly why I wanted to make a book about it because I think it can, this small change it can actually make a huge difference in um, your digestion, your eating habits in general, your cravings, the way your the rest of your day goes in terms of um, the re your the other two meals that you eat, and in my case, it actually helped to really change my life. I know that for many people, breakfast on the run can consist of something either liquid or a sticky bun of some kind. So to introduce vegetables to someone's diet after they've been used to either eating something traditional at home or something really no muss, no fuss, um, you know shoot for two points while while tossing the wrapper in the in the wastebasket as you race on by. <laughs> uh, would, cer would certainly find this quite different from their normal point of reference. Yes, so that's why um, I suggest that it not be too daunting. So in other words, that for breakfast, the vegetable that you eat for breakfast shouldn't be a really complicated dish, something that you might cook for dinner, for example. The because basically, in the morning, 
with breakfast, our needs are different, right? So You're right. breakfast uh, is um, exactly that. We're breaking our fast and we're kick-starting our day. So the kinds of foods that you want to eat for breakfast should be light and um, not too complicated. They should be simple. They should be pure. They should be digestible, um, unlike the kinds of foods that you may eat for dinner. We're trying to really harness our energy in the morning. So, um, so that's why I suggest that the vegetables you eat for breakfast should be simple, steamed, or water sauteed, or quick sauteed in oil, or even raw. And when I was starting out, I often started with a leftover vegetable because it did seem like a lot to, first of all, I was cooking whole grains every morning because I wanted to eat porridge. None of those sticky buns that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, those, <laughs> you know, those can really weigh you down, and that's really not what, you're, what you want to happen in the morning as you're taking off so to speak, right? Right. Um, so I would often have some leftover salad um, or a leftover, a simple vegetable dish that I had in the fridge that was left over. And, um, and I really suggest that people start gradually. In other words, you start with something you know. And most of us have a go-to vegetable dish like steamed broccoli or, um, or a simple green salad or even a pickle. You know, a, a fermented food is, is great to for your digestion at any time of day, and so it's something you could start with in the morning. Are there some f- aspects about the nutrition within vegetables which other cultures who have used vegetables in the breakfast hour have been deriving over the course of time that we as Americans have missed out on because we have not included that component in our meal in the morning or whenever our morning happens to be I work in the middle of the night so my morning is whenever I wake up in the afternoon right so I love this question because um, I studied macrobiotics and in macrobiotics we look at the great cultures the great societies of the world and what they ate so, um, so in my book, in, um, when I talk about radishes, I mention that the Romans ate a sort of radish relish for breakfast every day, mm. with, along with bread. So they ate a whole grain and a vegetable. Mm. And, of course, we know, we know all about Rome. Yeah. Um, so, yes, um, absolutely. We, we've, uh, some of the great um, cultures... In, in our in in history uh, ate vegetables for breakfast and as far as the as far as the nutritional values concerned I, uh, to circle back around to my initial question on that point uh, are there some things that, that come out of vegetables that we may might not otherwise have because we haven't been doing them absolutely well so first of all um, vegetables are fibrous Right, and yes. so we need soluble fiber for optimum digestion. So when we eat something like a sticky bun, I'm so glad. Example, um, it's perfect. That's really not helping our digestion at all. Right, it's it's just going to kind of sit there. It's very heavy. Whereas if we eat a sticky bun with some sautéed green. Um, mustard greens or arugula, it's going to be much more digestible. So the other thing is um, vegetables are, they're fibrous and they're also filled with vitamins and minerals. Nancy Wolfson Moshe is my guest on today and tomorrow's WIHS Journal about nutrition. For further information, call us at 860-346-1049. That's 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of this station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from WIHS, Middletown.